to myself What a wonderful world Hello guys and welcome to day two of Jasmine Rant where I talk about anything that is on my mind um, anything that I've been finding a lot of my friends ask me questions about or I don't know just just me ranting okay so yesterday's video I talked about my epidural story all about that and today I thought that I would make a video explaining my birth story so kind of explaining the before and after of getting the epidural what? what you don't want to hear mommy talk so it's been four months since I had my baby yeah you're a four month old now I know, I know, life's hard, life's hard. Are you hungry, hungry, okay. Okay, anyway, she was just hungry. I'm gonna feed while I make this video because mom life. So my birth story started when um, it was like, okay, this is gonna be TMI, so if you're not into that kind of stuff, just don't watch it, okay? Um, so for the last week of my pregnancy, or probably month actually, I was really over being pregnant. And I really wanted my baby to come. In case you didn't know, after 37 weeks, it's safe for your baby to be born. And so I was doing all like the natural techniques to start labor. Walking up and down the stairs. I was squatting, using the yoga ball, which I highly recommend. It's really comfortable too if you're like super pregnant. And I think what started my labor, honestly, was sex. They say what gets the baby in there is what gets the baby out. I was like, get this baby out of me, right? So I think that's honestly what started it. I was 38 weeks and five days when my water broke. And so that whole story, I woke up at like five in the morning. First of all, I didn't sleep until like two in the morning. So I woke up three hours later and I went to the bathroom and honestly, I was wearing my husband's boxers, which were black. And they're like the athletic material. Um, so it's kind of like moisture wicking for like sports and stuff, which don't ask me why I was wearing his underwear, okay? Like a girl hates laundry. Anyways, so I was wearing his underwear. It was moisture wicking, it was black, it was five o'clock in the morning. I felt like my underwear, or his underwear, was wet, but I couldn't really tell. And I didn't want to get my hopes up being like, my water broke, and then, you know, it being a false alarm, which speaking on that, I did do that like a couple weeks before. I thought my water had maybe broken, but it wasn't. So I didn't want to go through that twice. I changed my underwear. And then I was like, this maybe might have been a false alarm, maybe not, like let me wait it out and see. And also I thought like if this was it, maybe my contractions would start and then that would, you know, confirm it instead of having to go to the hospital. But then I woke up, I changed my underwear and then I went back to sleep. And I woke up at like eight in the morning. And as soon as I stood up, I felt like a gush in my underpants. And I was like, okay, I definitely did not just pee my pants right now because I know when you're pregnant, your bladder is like loose, but not that loose to the point where you stand up and literally just like completely wet yourself, right? So I go to the bathroom and then, you know, I pee, whatever. And I stand up and no more water is coming out. And I was confused because when you hear about your water breaking or you see it on movies and stuff, you always see like a waterfall, right? Between your legs, but that was not the case. For me, it was probably maybe like half a cup of liquid. I don't know, it, it just soaked my underpants. But then as soon as I took it off, it wasn't really like gushing like that. If anything, I went back to bed and I was like, I'm the type where I like stress out about things. I was Googling and you know, like contemplating, like should I go to the hospital? I was texting my friend who just had her baby at the time and she was encouraging me to get checked just in case because if your water breaks, that sac that is holding your baby in a very sterile condition is now compromised and you don't want your baby or you to get an infection so it's best to just be safe and to go get checked. So I did that. I like knew in my mind like, okay, this is it. I'm freaking in labor, like this is it, my baby's coming. But I go to the hospital and they tell me after long waiting, testing, doing this and that, the doctor's like, okay, so you got a false um, or negative on all the tests, which the tests they do are, one is just like a visual exam uh, where they put the, what is it called? The thing that like spreads your vagina. No, not your vagina, that's inside. 
the spreads like the opening of your vagina and they like look in there and try to see if there's any liquid you're like laying on the table and they make you cough like ah. and then if they see any liquid then they're like yeah that's probably it but he was like i don't see anything and they tried to do like the q-tip test where they put in this long q-tip looking thing it's like brown and if it turns blue then it's your amniotic fluid which confirms that your water has broken oh my nipple hurts are you done girl not done okay so he did that and it came out positive i mean negative as well and then the one last test is they take a little sample of uh the water and then they put it under a microscope and if it looks i think it's like a fern leaf if it has that shape then it's confirmed that it's your water which he said all of it was negative so i was really bummed out but i was like okay you know i still have another week until i'm technically like full full term anyways so it was probably just a false alarm i was disappointed but i was like okay you know it is what it is so i go home i was really curious about like what happened i was 100 percent sure i did not just wet myself but i just accepted like it is what it is and i went home my husband he was bummed because he had to go to work that day uh that night was actually a very long past midnight shift for him um and to my belly he was telling scarlet for like the whole week like please come please come i don't want to work that day so he was bummed he had to go to that shift and around so i went back to sleep because i had like no sleep right so around like Four, I think after like maybe two hours of sleeping I woke up again and as soon as I stood up I was dripping again so I was like okay this is my freaking water like if they send me home again I'm not gonna leave so I call my husband he takes forever but he finally comes home picks me up and we go back to the hospital again to ow I just bit myself oh god ow that freaking hurt anyways I go back to the hospital and get checked for a second time the third time I leaked through my underwear, right? So I'm like pretty sure this is it. I'm at the hospital, we did the waiting, we did the testing and all this stuff. This time I have a different doctor who seems a lot more educated or like, I don't know, experienced. Um, the first doctor seemed very like shaky with his answers and very like unconfident. So it made me feel unconfident with his answers. Anyways, the second time around I had a more you know confident doctor the second he dips in the q-tip it turns blue and he's like okay like i will do the other test just to confirm but most likely your water has broken and on one hand i was like yes i did not pee my pants i knew it i freaking knew it and on the other hand i was like oh shit. i'm having my baby now and then the doctors come in and they're like talking to me they're like just so you know a lot of first time moms it takes forever just mentally be ready to be in labor for the next couple days and i was like oh hell no like it's not gonna take me a couple days i'm gonna you know push this baby out it's gonna be fine girl i was so dumb like i don't know why i had this feeling that it was gonna happen a lot faster than it did i started out with the little pill tablet that you put under your tongue i don't know the exact name if i can look it up i'm gonna put it on the screen Oop, my belly's showing but yeah i had the pill thing under my tongue for forever and whenever they're like okay like your contractions are gonna start blah blah i think i had been having contractions for weeks it was just very like unstable unregular um which made me doubt like what contractions were and on the screen i'd have to see like okay this is a contraction like without the screen if i just felt what i felt i wouldn't know that i was in labor but that dragged on forever and after a full day of being in the hospital i finally was moved up to the labor labor and delivery section of the hospital what is it called wing um and before that i was just in like the pre-admission room or whatever and because my water had broken and they didn't want to <laughs> um put things in my vagina they wouldn't check me like I, pretty much at all i got checked like one time that whole day and at that point i didn't have like medication i was just dying silently i was like, anticipating to be moved up to the labor ward because they wouldn't move me until i was three centimeters or higher dilated and by the time they checked me i was one centimeter which was very disappointing because i had been one centimeter for weeks and they're like okay like you're just gonna have to wait it out and i was just dying knowing that like this probably wasn't going to progress for the next couple of days and i was just gonna have to die um i couldn't eat or drink or no i could drink water i think yeah and i can only get up to pee 
or poop, but I didn't need poop. So I can only get up to pee. Like they wouldn't let me walk around in labor. So that was probably the hardest part, like the mental aspect of just being stuck in a bed, an uncomfortable bed, um, not being able to move or eat or do anything, but just sit there and think about how much pain I was in. And then time passes. Every time I was like, I can't freaking handle this anymore. I need to be checked right now. They're like, okay, do you feel your contractions? Like, how are you feeling? And to be quite honest with you, I don't know if I'm dumb or what, but I could not tell what was contractions and what was not. Like, I was just in a state of pain. And I don't, I don't know, am I the only one? Like, if you have been through it and you didn't know what the contractions felt like, please let me know down in the comments so that I know it's not just me because whenever they're like, okay, like, how are you feeling? I'm like, uh, be like i don't know how else to explain it but they finally checked me i was at three i was moved and then i started on pitocin which was the stronger labor starter and i don't know why exactly i had to start on something else because i heard that once your water breaks and if you have to get induced the contractions are way worse and so i feel like those two things made it really painful once they told me i was at three and i was moving to the labor ward that was already like a full day and so I was anticipating them to say at least like, you know, five, six centimeters that I know I'm progressing, but it took so long for me to go from a one to a three. And so mentally I was just so done. I was like, give me the epidural right now. I got the epidural. That was a horrible story. I'll link it if you want to watch it, um, which I go more into detail, but I got the epidural. It was horrible. I still felt all the contractions. After I got the epidural, technically I wasn't supposed to eat or drink anything at all, not even water, which is horrible. Like I'd always, I was already in labor for like two days, um, and you know mentally I was done. I had no like motivation or like energy anymore. It was rough, all for you. But yes, your girl was struggling. Oh, you didn't like that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But yeah, it was rough. Finally get moved to the labor ward. Um, I get the epidural. I keep losing my train of thought. The nurses were so nice. I, I wish I remember the name of my nurse so I can give her like a care package or like a thank you card or something. But to be honest, I don't remember who she was. Um, I had several really awesome nurses that took really great care of me and snuck me ice chips when I wasn't supposed to eat or drink anything. So thank God for them or I literally would have just given up, which I mean, you can't really give up when you're in labor. Like, what am I gonna do? Like, sew my vagina shut? Like, no, she's coming out no matter what. But yeah, anyways, I keep going on tangents. Um, I just had to wait and wait and wait. And every time I wanted them to check me, they were like, let me know when you feel like pushing and that way we could check you and you start pushing. But the thing is, I did not know when it, I was ready to push. They kept saying like, even with epidural, you'll feel like you need to poop which first of all, my legs and my butt was extremely numb. I felt nothing, because I kept pushing the epidural thing. <laughs> what is wrong, girl? Why are you struggling so much, boo? Do you wanna lay down? Okay, she's laying down, but yes. So I felt nothing in my legs, nothing in my butt, which is where you'd feel the need to poop but I felt so much pain in my stomach and my back, but I wouldn't, I can't tell you like when the contractions were there, if that makes sense. Like it was just like always in pain. So when I was talking to my nurse and she was like, okay, let me know when you feel that way so we can check you and you can start pushing. I was like, girl, I do not know when I'm having, <laughs> she's just staring at me, you wanna see? We love a listening baby. But anyways, okay, so I was like, girl, I do not know when these contractions are happening. I do not feel the need to poop, but I am going to like murder somebody if I don't freaking have my baby in the next, you know, like right now. So my nurse was like, okay, just like, do you have to poop? And I was like, I don't know. And she's like, do you have to poop? And I was like, oh, yes, I have to poop. And so then she was like, okay, let me check you. And so she checked me and she told me I was at like a nine or something. And I was like, thank you. Lord Jesus Christ um, God is real because I would not have survived you know any longer she was like let me call your doctor and we can get you going so then my doctor comes in and she's you know just talks to me how you feeling blah blah and I was like I need to poop I need to push I don't know please get this baby out of me 
And so she's like, okay, let me check you. They check me and it was been like probably 20 minutes at that point. They're like, oh, you're nine and a half, you know, getting ready to be a 10, like get ready. And so I'm like, girl, I've been ready, let's go. So they're like, okay, let's do some practice pushes. Basically, when you're pushing, you have to lift your legs, which my legs were completely numb. So Shoda was on one side, the nurse was on the other side. They were holding my legs up and it was probably so heavy because I was like dead weight at that point. Your head is kind of like propped up like this. You have to scrunch in and the best explanation I got was, you know how like when you're cannonballing into a pool, you kind of like hoop and you kind of like compact. You want to do that. I wouldn't go with the sensation of like trying to push out a big poop because then you're going to use all your like butthole strength and not like your vaginal strength, which is what you want. And you know, your stomach, you're trying to like squeeze it out. So you're just gonna like you're going to dive into a cannonball. When you have a contraction, they say like, okay, like push. And then you hold it for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Okay. And then you release, go right back into it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. And you do that maybe three or four times with each contraction and that's how you have your baby in between contractions your baby is kind of just like stuck in your vaginal canal or whatever it's called your birthing canal um because before i had a baby i was very confused on the whole aspect on pushing and like delivering i was like wait how do you push for like two hours i literally thought that you were like <gasps> for like two hours straight so that didn't make sense to me but now it makes sense you only push with your contraction so i was just supposed to practice push while the doctors were like calling on the other people i don't know there's just like a lot of people that are there when you give birth but within probably a couple pushes they were like oh my god we could see the top of her head before we went into labor Shoda was not sure whether or not he was gonna watch as she came out um, But in the moment he was like holding my leg and he was like Your dad he did that Yeah, so he was like shook he was watching he was like oh my god I see the top of her head and that was like all the motivation I needed to just freaking push her out because the nurse was like just you know First time moms a lot of times they push for two to three hours just mentally be prepared I was like, oh hell no. I literally told her. I was like, no, we are getting this baby out right now. And she kind of laughed at me. She's like, ah, yeah. Like, I think she was like thinking that I was like underestimating it. But your girl was determined. And I pushed her out in probably like five contractions, maybe. It was like 30 minutes pushing, which went by so fast. Um, they went from, oh, I see the top of her head to she's here. Like, it wasn't head and then body. She just shot out in one. She literally like rocket launched into the world, but she tore me up real bad. I was laying there with my legs open while they were, you know, doing chest to chest or what is it called? Yeah, I think it's called chest to chest. When they put you on, they put your baby on your skin. Oh, no, skin to skin. That's what it's called. So they were doing that and then they cleaned her and everything. And then when they went to weigh her, whatever, all that stuff, uh, it's in the same room. I can watch. But I was just freaking laying or sitting there with my legs spread eagle um, And my doctor was like, sorry, this is taking a long time And I can see like the towels being collected on the table behind Sorry, my camera stopped But I was bleeding so much that the towel started collecting And it literally looked like a murder scene Like there was blood everywhere And they told me that I tore over a vein in my freaking vag So they took forever stitching that up It was rough, baby yeah, that's when I was happy for that epidural because I didn't feel anything in that portion. I was chilling But yeah, after they stitched me up, which took a solid 30 45 minutes I me my baby obviously my husband we were moved to um, the what is it called? It's still in the labor and delivery wing, but after you have your baby and then we were there for two extra days because my water had been broken for so long that they wanted to monitor us, me and the baby, for infection, which thankfully we did not have. Good job, baby. You were a healthy babe. And yeah, and that is how Miss Poopoo was born. Sorry, 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 sorry. Now, four months later, she is the most sassy one. And although she can't talk, she'll... You can tell when she's angry. Okay guys, she is getting fussy, so I need to go. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Jasmine Rants. That's what it's called now. Thank you.
very much. I also post on my Instagram every single day, so if you'd like to follow us there, then please do so. Um, like I said, for the rest of the month, I'm gonna try to post every single day about just random stuff. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I am quite an open book, so feel free to ask whatever is on your mind. Um, and if you are pregnant and getting ready to deliver your baby, I know like my story was quite horrendous and even for me, I'm like, do I want another one? But eventually you will forget the pain. Obviously it's worth it. That's what I always say. People are like, how was your birth? And I was like, it was horrible. And they're like, oh, but you got a baby out of it. I'm like, true, but like, <laughs> you asked me about my birth. So please don't take this as complaining. Um, I would have done anything to, for my baby. And even if it was 10 times like longer and more horrible, I still would have done it. Not really had like I had a choice, but you know, I would have done it. It was all worth it for you, boo. I love you. But we gotta go. Till we see you guys next time. Bye guys. Say bye. Bye bye. <coughs> oh. <coughs> oh, okay, time to go. <coughs> <laughs> now you're happy, now that you can see yourself. What a wonderful